Hey guys, it's Biggs. Now today, I want to talk about one thing and one thing only today, and it's going to be all about me. Sorry, but I'm going to talk today about filtration and what my favorite filters are and why they're my favorite filters. So, stay tuned. Now, I've been keeping fish a long, long time, since I was a little kid, and I'm going to be 50 this year, so we're looking at 40 plus years of keeping fish. Now, I've run the whole gamut of different types of filters. I remember back in the day, the little corner box filters, where you had to put the, the little poly wool and the carbon in, or the charcoal, and they worked fine too. And I honestly, they still work just as good as they did then, and they're wonderful for breeder tanks. And then they came along new technologies where you could uh, run uh, a sponge filter, which again, we still use today. They're wonderful filtration methods used for fry tanks. And then there's those new Hamburg mat filters that came out of Germany, where you put the whole wall of your tank and it's air driven or power driven, super, super efficient biological filtration. And then the, it came along years down the road, uh, then came under gravel filters. Well, I remember maintaining an entire store, 300 plus tanks with all under gravel filters. And every single day of the week I was going around doing maintenance. Because if you did, if you skip maintenance on one section and waited a couple of weeks and that tank never got done, all that nitrite turned to nitrate and then it just went and just reverted back to ammonia and killed the tank. So if you had a, a staff member that wasn't taking care of those under gravels, that was a real challenge. After that, then we went into the early 80s, and then we got into power-driven stuff. That's where you got the little hang-on-the-back filters and the canister filters and stuff. Now, a lot of this technology was already available. It was already available in different areas of the world. Europe is much more advanced than we'll ever be in regards to aquariums. Same with uh, Asia and Japan and stuff. But uh, we're catching up. We're always a little bit behind the game, but we're catching up. But there was one particular type of trickle, uh, one type or particular type of filtration that came along in the, in, the, in the mid to late 80s. And it, was, it came out of Europe first, but this, this type of filtration had been around for a while. Now this book came out. This book changed my life. The Optimum Aquarium, when that book came out, and I'm gonna say this was in the, in the mid to late 80s. This came out in 1986. So that's a long time ago. But that book changed everything the way I looked at aquariums. And it used these simple little balls, these little pin balls. These were these are a newer version of them. These aren't the original ones, but I did have the original ones, and I have honestly enough to fill two 50-gallon rain barrels out in my garage, and that's what we're going to use for filtration when we build the 12-foot tank soon. But I've been using modified versions of trickle filtration, and that's what it's called. And we'll talk about it in a second for many, many, many years. A normal styled trickle filtration tank usually has a tank above a reservoir, not necessarily a tank above a tank. The reservoir is usually where the water is pre-filtered and the water is delivered via, on the other side of the tank, usually there's an overflow. Usually there would be the, the, the trickle filter portion, which is the, the media chamber, is below the tank. And then below that would be what's called a sump. And water is conveyed to this. It is pre-filtered generally. Now, my, uh, you could use different types of uh, sponges and different types of filter floss and stuff like that. But my absolute, what we're going to use in the 12 foot and what I absolutely love is these Micron filter socks. You can buy these from any aquarium supply place. You basically put a die and you fill it, uh, a, a die to cut it, cut the hole, the sleeves slide in and the water comes in and pours through these sleeves and it filters out everything that's mechanical. If it can pass through here, it's okay. It's not going to affect anything. So I love the Micron filter socks. But once it goes to that, and it actually hits the biomedia itself, the biomedia itself should not get dirty. Ideally, even in this setup, because my lights are close to it, ideally, this tank, this should probably be painted. Because if they sit in a dark environment, it's better. But the reason I absolutely love trickle filtration over almost any other type of filtration is the fact that the biomedia itself is removed from the water column. So it makes much more surface area. It doesn't matter what media you're going to use. It makes for much more surface area for bacteria to colonize. And it makes it a much more efficient system. These type of filtration systems, trickle filters, or modified versions of, have been used in water treatment, city water treatment plants, for decades and decades. Uh, and they're very, very efficient. The other factor that's a super benefit about using this style of filtration is that they are also huge oxygen producers. 
Because the, everything is above the water column, everything is degassed, it, it just infuses the water with a huge, huge oxygen saturation point. So for riverine fish or fish that need higher water, higher oxygen levels, these things are exceptional providers. I absolutely can't say enough about them. Now making a trickle filter, this is an absolute DIY dream. They're easy, easy to make. You can make them out of modified, those little type of organizing drawers where you put your media in the different drawers. You can make them out of Rubbermaid. You can make them out of old aquariums. If you're even handy whatsoever, you can make a really, really efficient biological and mechanical trickle filter for your aquarium. Now, when it comes to media, Biggs is a bit of a stickler. I buy up bio balls at every aquarium society auction I go to, almost anywhere in the country, because they're permanent. There's nothing happens to these. They do not break down. They're a permanent biomedia, and water trickles through them, and, it, and, and the more that the water stays in contact where the bacteria is going to colonize and break the waste products down, the slower it goes is actually the better. So I've seen people have used all sorts of stuff. I remember back in the day I had a dear friend who was always tinkering and making stuff. He tried using styrofoam packing peanuts. It didn't work. Bad. He's tried using hair curlers. Where are you going to find a large, large surplus of hair curlers? Again, those hair curlers, though, the plastic that they're used is not intended to be outside, so it's not going to be UV stable. They will degrade and break down long term under aquarium conditions. So that's bad. The one that I see the most being used, and that's the reason being, is it's exceedingly cheap. You can go to any dollar store and buy them, and those are just those red, yellow, blue, green pot scrubbers. You see that little spun little nylon uh, thing and it makes a little puck? I'll put a picture up here. But those little pucks, those things there, people have been using those forever. Now the only problem with them is, again, the plastic that they are made with is not intended to be used in sunlight. And when it's not used in sunlight, that means it will eventually degrade. I'm not saying your aquarium is going to be outside or your pond filter is going to be outside, but products that are not intended to be stabilized outside conditions will still break down, albeit slowly, in, you know, in water in an environment indoors. The other factor I do not like about pot scrubbers is they actually compact over time. If they're not really properly pre-filtered and cleaned out, they, they will compact with time as dirt gets to them. So that's one factor I've never really liked of them either. But I do have an alternative. It is almost as cheap. It comes ready to go. You don't have to do anything to modify it. You could build your unit to accommodate it, and I've been using it forever. And honestly, I actually even think I enjoy it better than the bio balls themselves. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this. This is sold in hardware stores anywhere in North America. I'm assuming Europe and Asia too. I can't speak. Can't speak to that. It's basically a plastic mesh, and it is sold as rain gutter guard. Now, rain gutter guard, it's normally about four to five dollars a roll up here in Canada. This roll, I can't tell you if it's been cut, but it looks pretty much whole. It's loose. Normally, I leave the rolls tight. You can go ahead and modify this in any way you want because you look, it's just plastic media, right? It's made out of inert plastic, very similar to this. But the thing that I find absolutely best is if you can modify and build your trickle filter chamber, the top chamber, the chamber where it's going to hold the media, that you can put these rolls like this and that the water's going to come to them like this. And that way the water's going to have to work its way slowly trickling all the way through all this biomass until it gets through. And if you could stack two, three, four, whatever. So I've often taken things like a 10 gallon tank and putting two rows of them and it takes six or eight rolls to fill the bottom of a 10 gallon aquarium as my, as my trickle filter. And then I'll often do two rolls. So I'm looking at 16 rolls total times three, four, five bucks. To me, that's a good, efficient filter that's still cheaper than any big canister filter I'm going to buy, and it's permanent media. The nice thing about this product is this product is always sold in the hardware stores. It is 100% intended to be outside, and it's going to be up on your roof in your gutters, protecting your gutters from leaves accumulating in them. And it also comes with a warranty. Why would it come with a warranty? Well, it comes with a warranty to ensure that the product doesn't degrade when exposed to UV light, sunlight. That means it will not degrade in your aquarium at all. So I have some of these rolls that are 25, 30 years old now, and they look exactly the same. So if you guys want an alternative DIY trickle filter media, I cannot speak highly enough about this media here. Rain gutter guard, I absolutely love it. 
So there you have it, guys. You know, I, I'm running canister filters. I've got three Eheim canister filters running in this room right now. I absolutely love them too. But honestly, my heart is absolutely sold. I absolutely 100% am fully invested in nice big trickle filters. Now, I agree, they're not for everybody. If you have a very, very large aquarium and you have the space below it to make a large sump, the bigger the sump means more increased water volume. So if you have a 100 gallon tank and you have a 25 gallon sump, you have 125 gallons of water in your system. Makes your tank essentially bigger volume wise. It's not making it bigger for space, but makes it bigger for volume wise. And the fact that all the media is always removed from the water column, no other filter does that. Sponges, boxes, under gravels, canisters, hang on the back filters, everything is filled with water. So water is occupying bulk of that space. There's more area for bacteria to colonize. They're much more efficient biological filtrations. But the real key is with these trickle filters is that you definitely have to ensure that you have really good mechanical filtration. And as I recommended, I like using the socks or a nice piece, the thing I also like using and I use in these two tanks is I use a cutoff piece of Hamburg mat filter. And that's something that I can take and wash, take and wash and maintain it, make sure that that part stays clean so that the biomedia itself can do its job the best. There you have it guys. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.